Greetings, everybody. How y'all doing out there this wonderful, wonderful Tuesday evening? And uh, we bring you greetings. Yes, we bring you greetings from the Kingdom Embassy here in the beautiful city of Arlington, Texas. Come on in from everywhere, wherever you are. Listen, I'm so excited to be with you guys on tonight. And uh, it's your friend, your brother, your preacher, your teacher for this Tuesday night. And uh, it's successful at you time. And let me tell you something. There ain't nothing more powerful uh, in our lives that's going to be the success like the father's dream for our lives. And so I'm excited about that on tonight. So, so much so, I'm going to go ahead and gonna get into it. And uh, we're going to forego our success for you confession. And I'd like to get a copy of that. Shoot us an email at T O E M embassy at gmail.com. Uh, and we will get you out a copy of that uh, success for you confession if you would like to have a copy of that. And uh, we've been talking about the original purpose. Yes, we're still on our subject, the original purpose. And, uh, and we're talking about our subtopic. It is the father's dream for his children. Now, listen, I got up here on my uh, sleeve. If y'all can see that, let's see, what does it say? What does it say? It says, I voted. Yes, it's that day. It's that time. The polls have closed. Did you vote today? If you didn't, shame on you. No, I'm just playing. I'm playing because people do forget because I, I forgot so many times myself. Not shame on you, but just be mindful going forward. And uh, to remember to vote. And uh, your vote is your voice. And your voice is your vote. And, uh, and for those of y'all that did vote, Thank God, praise God, you participate in the process. Listen, you know, people of the kingdom, you got to understand this. The kingdom of God gets involved in the world. It's just not of the world. You know, we've got this so mixed up about being separate and not being of the world, so much so that we have not gotten involved with the world. Listen, if you want the world to be a better place, you got to participate. Stop cursing the darkness when you hide in your light. The way you deal with darkness is you take your light where darkness is. And darkness has to bow to the power of light every time, all the time, and everywhere. You got to understand that God's, it's been designed that way. And uh, we've got to stop allowing darkness to, to intimidate us in any way, form, or fashion. All right, but that's not my teaching tonight, but I just thought I'd mention that as we get ready and congratulate those of you that went out and voted and uh, did your homework and went out and voted wherever you are, wherever you live, or part of the world you're in, amen. Let's be a part of the answer so we don't be a part of the problem. And uh, so we're talking about the father's dream. Oh, my goodness. Let me share my screen with you. And, uh, and we're going to look at, again, we're going to repeat what is the father's dream for his children. The father's dream is his original purpose for your life and for my life. Father God has a dream for us as his children. You got to understand that. He dreams concerning us. And we gave you the acronym last time, I believe. If not, we're going to rehearse it, give it to you again. Here's what y'all want you to write down for the word dream in an acronym. I want you to remember this. And we're going to look at some very powerful things again today concerning this. But this is review. Dream stands for divine reason, envisioned, anticipating manifestation. Again, a God-given dream is a divine reason that's been envisioned, anticipating manifestation. Just in general conversation, if these are not the elements of your dream, that's not a real dream. See, a dream from God is a divine reason upon your life. My God. I'm going to try to hold my seat. And because uh, this thing is this this. This thing is exciting to me. 
The father has a dream for his children. The father has a dream for you. And it's time for you and I to allow the father's dream to permeate our thought life, permeate every part of our lives, spiritually, mentally, and physically. When the father dreams, drive your life. Drive your emotions. Drive your relationships. It's going to set you on a course you could have never set yourself on without it. Which means it's going to bless you beyond your imagination. I, 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 want, to, I want to go back to something we, we were reading. In, I want to look at Ephesians to the, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 3 as well. Because I need you to see that. But let me let me let me continue to emphasize this. God's dream is man's original purpose. And man's original purpose is God's dream. What is it? In a nutshell, God's dream is that his sons, that's male and female, will expand and establish his kingdom and manage his resources through his life, their lives, and their relationship in the earth. That's the father's dream for you. Is that your dream? If that's not your dream, how can you walk with the father? How can you walk with God when you're not in, in agreement concerning your life? And we're going to look at some examples tonight. We're going to start, up, we're going to start on one of them. We're only going to get to one of them. I already know of how powerful God's dream is in your life when you let it in. Tonight, I want you to let in your heart the Father's dream for you. My God, it's, you got to get this teaching. I, I've got a whole teaching on it. You got to get it. You got to hear it. You got to receive it. God's life will turn out to be a nightmare without the Father's dream. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. All hell broke loose. Life became a nightmare when they disconnected from the father's dream for their life. What are you dreaming? When it comes to your finances, what are you dreaming when it comes to your relationship? What are you dreaming when it comes to your business? What are you dreaming when it comes to your ministry? What are you dreaming? when it comes to every area of your life. My God, the father's dream, divine reason. God has a divine reason for my existence, a divine reason for your existence. See, we gotta stop thinking we're just humans. <laughs> my goodness. No, we are not. No, I am not. Humanity is what I wear. Humanity is not who I am. Let me say that again. Humanity is what I wear. Humanity is not who I am. I am divine. You are divine because you are spirit. And more specifically, you're of the spirit of God. So say with me, I am divine in nature. I am naturally divine. My goodness. And that means since I'm divine, the reason for my existence is divine. What does that mean? What does it mean that my, that my existence is divine? That means nothing else outside of it can stop it but you. Nothing in the earth can snuff out. Nothing in the earth can stop the Father's dream that's on your life because his reason for your existence is divine. My God. Somebody need to catch that. So say it with me again. I have a divine reason upon me I have a divine reason upon my life. I have a divine reason for why I'm expecting to be healed. 
I have a divine reason of why I'm expecting to prosper. I have a divine reason for my happiness. I have a divine reason for my peace. I have a divine reason for my wholeness. Oh, my goodness. Listen, when you can't find no other reason, know that you got a divine reason for a better life. Can I help somebody tap into their divine reason tonight? And that's what this teaching is all about, is to help you to understand the divine purpose, the divine reason, the divine intent for your existence. I'm excited about that. And I'm so excited to be a part of the process to help you to understand that and to live that out. Because listen, you are divine. So successfully you is divinely ordered. That's not an exception. That's the standard. That's the rule. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So again, say it with me. Father God has a divine reason for my existence. And this divine reason, he envisioned in his heart. He, he envisioned this divine reason in his heart concerning you. And he's anticipating the manifestation of it. Isn't that what he said to Jeremiah? Isn't that what he said to Abraham? Isn't that what he said to Joseph? Isn't that what he said to all of his children? Isn't that the way Jesus lived his life? Jesus lived his life on the basis of the father's dream. How are you living your life, my brother, my sister? Are you dreaming outside the father's dream? I'm gonna show you as we move through this, that the father's dream for our lives, the father's dream for our lives, y'all, Is, on, is the only thing that he finances in our lives is his dreams. God's not going to finance the stuff that you dream up that don't align with his dream. Everything that you and I dream, and I know this is hard for some people to accept because, you know, we so humanity, we're so human in our thinking, we don't think divine, which means our thinking is so limited that we can't imagine what I'm about to say. That everything that I dream is the line of what the father's dream. Yes, everything that I dream is the line of what the father's dream. Let me show you something. Let me show you what the father wants to do in our lives. Let's look at it again. First Corinthians chapter two. There are things that the Father planned to do in your life and to do concerning your life that he's only going to put it in your heart. He's not going to put it in the heart of somebody else, the mind of somebody else. He's going to put it in your heart. Watch this. We read it to you last week. Mm, 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 mm. First Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this, y'all. Paul said, listen, when I came to preach to you, I didn't want your faith to stand in the, the wisdom of men, but I want your faith to stand on the wisdom of God. I want your faith to stand on what's in the Father's heart for your life. Watch this. He says, verse 9, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. In advance, the father has put together a life. He dreamed a life for you and I. Now, if, if you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about. And if you got parents, you know what I'm talking about as well. That your parents have a they dream a better life for you. They dream a better future for you. Well, the word of God says this. If you being evil, know how to give, know how to dream good things for your children, how much more your heavenly father will give good things to them who ask him? 
Oh my God. That's some things that the father has for you that he wants you to ask him for because he's already dreamed it. He's already put it together and he's giving you faith for it. He wants to move it from his heart to your heart. Watch this, verse number 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. What are those deep things? The dreams envisioned in God's person, in God's will, in God's heart for you and for, for me. He wants to reveal them to you by his spirit. The Holy Spirit will, listen, the Holy Spirit is about revealing the heart of the Father to us. Did you not know that the Holy Spirit only deal with you and I on the basis of what's in the Father's heart? The Holy Spirit, he said, he said, reveal them to us by his spirit. Because the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Look quickly with me. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Watch this. Verse 27. It says, verse 26 and 27, it says, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, here's the verse now, verse 27, watch this. And he, talking about the Spirit of God, that searches the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints. Who is that? The Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints. Who are the saints? That's the sons of God. That's you and I. Now watch this. How does he make intercession for the saints? According to the will of God. There it is. What does the word will mean? The original intent. The original purpose. The divine reason of God. Oh my God. So listen to me. This is why the, the listen, this is why the enemy wants us to be confused about the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Uh-oh. -uh. Notice what I said and what I didn't say. I didn't say a fruit of the spirit is not speaking in tongues. I said the purpose of the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Why do we act like the, the greatest evidence, and in some cases the only evidence of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues? Why do we do that? Why, why do we emphasize that so much? I'm showing you what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. As a matter of fact, when Jesus told us the purpose of the Holy Spirit, he said nothing about tongues. Because tongue is not a purpose, it's a fruit. It's a privilege. The Holy Spirit will inspire you to speak in tongues, but don't make it its purpose. Because when you make tongues, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, then listen, you're playing right into the enemy's trap and you're diminishing the power and the purpose of the Holy Ghost. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to reveal to you the heart of the Father. That's why Jesus said he will not speak of his own, but only that which is of the Father, like Jesus. Jesus said, I didn't speak of my own. I only spoke that which is of the Father. That was Jesus' purpose. That's why that's the Holy Spirit purpose. And guess what? That's your purpose as well. That's my purpose as well. To only do 
was in the heart of the father. The only live. Do you see the, the common thread here? So he said the Holy Spirit, when he intercede for the saints, he's going to intercede according to the original intent, the divine reason of God. Wow. You wonder why the Holy Spirit is not helping you with your project that you're doing for God? Because you're not doing with God what God intended. Saints, hear me very careful. We've got to stop all of this doing stuff for God. Because when you, when you live a life of doing stuff for God, you can make up stuff. And you think because you're doing something good for God, God accepts it, not so. And I know this is stalling for some people, but you got to understand something. We've got to stop watering down this life of faith. We got to start watering down our prophetic life. We got to start watering down our life of kingdom. A kingdom life. A kingdom of God life. Comes by qualification of that which is in the Father's heart. Not what I dream up. Not what I come up with. You don't make up a plan and then submit it to God and pray that he approve it. No, the scripture tells us, according to Proverbs 16, that we are to plan according to God's plan. We are to make preparations according to God's predestined plan. We are to prepare ourselves for God's original plan. And then it says, our thoughts will be brought forth. See, our, our thoughts will be established when we commit to the work that fulfills the Father's plan for our lives, when we make preparations to fulfill the Father's original plan and his original purpose for our lives, then God will establish our thoughts. He'll give us a strategy we need. Are you hearing me tonight? So the Holy Spirit only intercedes according to the original intent of the Father. Now look at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to the purpose. See, it's the purpose of God that makes all things work together. Not just being having, saved and having a relationship with God. Because see, all saints don't qualify for this scripture. So it's very possible that all things in your life will not work together for your good. The only qualification is that you must be working in alignment, in agreement with the Father's purpose for your life in order for all things to work together for your good. My goodness. So back to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, the, verse 10, but the spirit of God revealed him unto us by his spirit because the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is talking to you and I every day. And he's talking to us on the basis of what's in the Father's heart. Not what's in your heart, but what's in the Father's heart. Because what's in my heart and your heart is supposed to be the same things as in the Father's heart. What how does what's in the Father's heart get in my heart? Number one, prayer. Yes, that's the purpose of prayer. Listen to me very, very careful. God gave us an earthly tool, an earthly vehicle that will make it possible for a divine transfer to take place every day. I'm going to say it again. Father God gave us a vehicle, gave us an earthly tool 
that divine transfer take place every day. It's called prayer, y'all. Prayer is the highway for divine transfer from heaven to earth. When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, he taught them how to become a vehicle for heaven to make its way into earth, for the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. See, you've got to make up your mind that I'm going to be a, a, a earthly vessel for divine transfers to take place between heaven and earth. Don't be the reason that devilish transfers take place between hell and earth. Let me say it again. You have not got to decide. And if you take your notes, I want you to write this down. You got to make up your mind to be a vehicle for divine transfer to take place between heaven and earth through your life. Matthew chapter 6. And if you're not a vehicle for divine transfer from heaven to take place in the earth, then that means you are a vehicle for devilish transfer to take place between hell and earth. Simply put, are you allowing heaven to come to earth through your life? Or are you allowing hell to come to earth through your life? They were two choices. Before the fall, Adam and Eve were the gateway of heaven into the earth. But when they disobeyed God, they became the gateway of hell into the earth. And all hell broke loose on all the earth. Listen, and Jesus reversed that and gave us the power to reverse it ourselves. By accepting him. You and I have got to decide that I am going to be a gateway for heaven into the earth. Through my family, through my finances, through my relationships, through my business, my ministry, through my social life, my friendship. Every area of my life, you've got to set on purpose to be a vehicle for heaven's divine transfers to be made. You know, when you do that, guess what, y'all? You're going to reap the same. You know what? Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. If you sow a life that says, I'm going to be a vehicle for divine transfers from heaven to earth, guess what? Somebody's going to do the same for you. Somebody is going to make themselves available to heaven to make a divine transfer into the earth, into your life, because you sold the same thing. Do you see it? My goodness. I want to be a vehicle for heaven to transfer into your life. I want to show that. That's why I come week in and week, week out. That's why I do what I do in ministry, in any form of fasting. I want to be a vehicle for divine release, divine transfers into your life from heaven to earth. And if I do that, and if I focus on that, I don't have to worry about being used by the devil. How do you want to be used every day? Divine transfers from heaven or devilish transfers from hell? Your choice. Life and death set before you. You choose. Yes, that's what God did. Way back in Genesis, he gave us the choice to choose divine transfers from heaven or devilish transfers from hell. Well, what have you been doing lately? How are you living your life? Listen to me very carefully. There ain't but two ways. You either two that heaven is using to bless the earth or you are two that hell is using to curse the earth. Every day, that's a choice you and I are making. I want you to think about that. 
from now on? Which avenue am I giving permission to? From above or from beneath? There ain't no in between, y'all. Sorry. Not, it don't exist. So watch this, y'all. So God wants to reveal to us the things that's in his heart by his spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God know of no man but the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things. Why do we receive the spirit of God? That we might know the things. Brothers and my sisters, please hear me. The Father wants you to know. That's why the Holy Spirit, if you are believing in Christ, you are saved. The Holy Spirit is in your life to bring to you and to reveal to you and to lead you into the thing that's in the Father's heart, which will bless you beyond the imagination. That's the power of God that's at work in you. Watch this. Let me show it to you. Let's finish reading this. Then I'm going to show you another in, in, in Ephesians. He said, now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He wants you to know. He don't want you to live in the darkness. He wants you to have the intelligence. Listen, the Holy Spirit is speaking the truth of heaven right now to you in a personal way, even as I'm talking. You hear the Holy Spirit saying some things to you that you had questions about. And through this teaching, he's bringing answers. He's bringing clarity. He's bringing understanding. He's bringing conviction that's going to move you into faith. Ooh, my goodness. Let me show it to you in another form. Go with me, Ephesians chapter 3. We all know it. But you may not have thought about it in this context. But you will from now on. Watch this. Oh, my God. I love what Paul says here. Um, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, he says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that, that, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. My God. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints, what is the breadth and length and depth and height? My goodness. In other words, he said, I want you to see the full spectrum of the Father's love for you. Because did you not know that the Father's love is communicated in his purpose for us? But God so loved the world, he died. Why? Because he's so committed to his purpose to mankind. It, it gives him a love that drives him to give his life with the hopes that you receive it for yourself. My God. Woo. Jesus died for the Father's original purpose, y'all. That's what put him on the cross. That's what put him in the grave. That's what sent him to hell. That's what got him up out of hell, and that's what got him up out of the grave, and that's what he settled when he went back to heaven with the Father. It is finished. What? I restored your original purpose, and now we can continue with the original plan. My God, that's salvation. That's the purpose of your salvation. It is to be empowered, equipped, and encouraged to fulfill the original purpose of your Father God. Ooh, my, my, my. Watch this. 
He said, now, Paul said, my prayer for you is that you may comprehend this. Look at verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What feel God's, what fills the Father's heart? What makes him full, y'all? His original purpose for your life. Oh, boy, I tell you. Oh, uh, listen. Ooh, I'm, I'm almost speechless. And yes, I'm a kid in a candy store. And once you get this, I, I got a very powerful series coming about this where Jesus told a parable about the kingdom. How it's the one pearl that's worth everything in your life. Oh, my Jesus. When you see this, you're going to sell everything to get it. But stay with me. We're going to get this. You're going to get this. Watch this now. He said, verse number 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, or exceeding rather, abundantly above all that we ask or think how according to the power that worketh in us. What is that power that worketh in us? It's the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit working in us? He's working in us, the Father's dream. Even while you sleep, he's trying to show you the Father's dream. My God. Even while you're awake and throughout the day, he's speaking to you about the Father's dream. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you according to the Father's dream. And if you follow the Holy Spirit, he'll lead us to fulfill the Father's dream. And as we fulfill the Father's dream, guess what, y'all? The Father shall reward us with everything that comes with that dream. That's beyond what you ever ask, think, or have ever imagined. My goodness. He said, I'm doing that according to the power that worketh in us. When we begin to align ourselves with the Father's dream in our heart, then the Holy Spirit that abides within us will explode our lives. Are you, are you hearing me? This is the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to bring you and I into the fulfillment and the fruition of the Father's dream for our lives. He's not just a power or a force. He's a person with the purpose. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is a person with the Father's purpose. And his purpose is the same as the Son. His purpose is the same as the Father. Saints, this ain't difficult. All of our religious stuff has brought confusion to the simple. When the Holy Spirit is trying to bring simplicity to the complicated. I'm not downplaying it. I'm just simply saying, if we'll let it say what it says, do what it does, then it'll be what it needs to be. For you and for the kingdom of God. And I've made up my mind. I'm going to let it do what it does. Say what it says. So it can be what the father wanted to be. Because that's the best thing I can do for me. That's the best thing I can do for you. Let the father have his way. By his Holy Spirit. If nothing else tonight. You learn. Some life changing truth. About the Holy Spirit. His purpose is to help you fulfill 
the Father's original purpose for your life. And if you're trying to use the Holy Spirit for anything other than that, that's why he's not working. The Holy Spirit will not allow you, will not allow me to use him for anything outside of the Father's original purpose. So stop begging the Holy Spirit to do stuff that's not within the original purpose. Because he's not going to do it. He's not going to help you. He's not going to fight for you. But watch this. When you and I embrace the Father's original purpose for our lives, all the host of heaven, the Holy Spirit, Father, and Son will go to bat for you. That's what happened to Jesus. All of heaven was backing him. Jesus said, listen to me. I can say the word and a legion of angels will show up and handle this. But I'm not going to do that. Why? No need. No need. Listen. The angels of God with the Holy Spirit will move earth for heaven's purpose for your life. When you and I align our lives, align our thinking, align our passions, align our emotions, align our intelligence, and align our will with the will of the Father, with the original purpose, the original reason, the divine reason of the Father. When we align ourselves with that, the universe will obey. Oh, it's all in the word. Why do you think Joshua was able to, to command his son to stand still? Because he aligned himself with Father God. And when we align ourselves with Father God, God's creation has to obey us like God. Saints, we got to get this. Listen, I haven't arrived. I'm on the way as well with you. But this one thing I do know, I'm not where I used to be. And I'm forgetting those things behind me. And I'm pressing. I'm reaching for the goal. I'm reaching for the prize. And that prize is simply the Father's original purpose for my person, for my life, and everything connected with it. And I pray that be the same thing for you. You've got to press toward the mark, the high calling. You've been called higher. And there's the Father's original purpose that's going to get you there. Let that become your pursuit every day. Don't get tired of hearing me teach about this. Because first of all, I'm not going to get tired and I'm not going to stop because somebody's bored. Somebody wants something new. Listen, you don't need something new. You need to master what's right in front of you. And it'll renew your life every day. There ain't nothing old about this truth. This is life changing. And listen, God has given me the assignment to bring the body of Christ, not me alone, but others included. And I pray that they be obedient too. Like John the Baptist and Jesus himself, stick to the Father's plan. Preach what he tells you to preach and nothing else. And he said, preach this gospel of the kingdom to all nations. Until that's done so, he said, the end shall not be. But when it is, then the end shall come. When this gospel of the kingdom is preached to all nations. And listen, the kingdom of God is the Father's original purpose and the father's original purpose is his dream because his dream is to use your life and my life to establish and expand his kingdom and to empower us to manage his resources through our lives and our relationships in the earth Will you make a decision today 
to say, you know, I'm going to let my life be about his kingdom. Will you make a decision today that I'm going to let my relationships be about his kingdom? See, there's a whole lot of saints in a lot of bad situations. You know why? Not because of the devil. You sabotage your own life because you make decisions about your life and about your relationships that were outside of the father's purpose. And now you want him to help you fix it. No, he won't. No, he won't. The father will only help you with this purpose. Get in line with the purpose and let the relationships do what they do. We've got to stop playing these games. We've got to stop trying to pimp God just because you say, you sanctify, you Holy Ghost feel. You don't even know the purpose of the Holy Ghost. And that's sad. Every saint should know that. You think it's speaking in tongues, really. That's a fruit, my brother, my sister. That's not a purpose. That's a privilege. Oh, yeah, you were speaking in tongues. Why? We're talking about the heavenly language. We're talking about divine impartations. We're not talking about gibberish and jabbering and all this foolishness that's going on around them. No. The Holy Spirit will empower you to speak a language that's heavenly, that only you and he can interpret, and or empower you to speak an earthly language that you never learned and studied, but because he want to use you to speak to other nations. He'll empower your mind to speak a foreign language as though your birth language. That's what took place in Acts. That wasn't gibberish. That was people supernaturally speaking languages they didn't learn. And what was God doing? He was letting earth know heaven is here and is here to stay. That's what took place in Acts chapter 2. Heaven showed up and it displayed itself by, by giving divine impartation to the mind of men and women who had not studied or learned the language. And that's why the, the Bible said the people started hearing people speaking their language that they knew they couldn't speak. Because that's how the Holy Spirit shows himself. He wanted to do the same supernatural thing in your life and my life. If we would yield to the Father's original purpose for our life. Listen, that's my time tonight. I want to thank you for joining me, allowing me to come to you and share with you again the Father's dream. Listen, next week, we're going to jump off into something that's very powerful concerning the Father's dream. You don't want to miss it. Tell somebody about it. You're going to see something and hear something about the Father's dream. I, I promise you, you never heard it before. And if you have, it's going to be a review. You need to refresh your memory. It's going to change your life. Tell somebody about the teaching and broadcast and say, draw me to next week, same time, same place. And we're going to go deeper in understanding the Father's dream for your life and mine. Until then, dream the dream. Let it be what it be. Let it do what it does. And it's going to help you to live as you was created and not as you born. Because that's the only way you can be successful. God bless you. Appreciate you. Love y'all. Y'all have a great night. See you next time. Be blessed.